Hello folks, I want to take a few minutes to talk about how to fill out an experimental design diagram. So this is an example that we used in class the other day about testing the effectiveness of insulators um, in cold weather. So when you're filling out an experimental design diagram, we are looking at um, a, basically just a graphic organizer that has all the data in it that we need. Um, and so you could take this graphic organizer and perform an experiment based on that information. So when you're filling out an experimental design diagram, you want to be as specific as possible. And you want to be able to hand this to anybody and have them understand what the experiment is. So first we have our question, which type of insulator is best? And our hypothesis, we typically want a hypothesis to be in the if IV, then DV formula. Um, so I like to actually think through my independent variable, think through my dependent variable, and then tie that into the hypothesis and make edits from there. So in this scenario, we had students looking at the effectiveness of wool, cotton, and nylon as insulators um, and taking the temperature of the water um, that they've set up to see which one works the best. So my independent variable, as we discussed the other day in class, is the insulator. So the insulator type. And my levels of the IV, then we want to think about what are we actually testing. So we are testing wool cotton, nylon, and between those three, we don't have a control. So how do we know that an insulator even does anything? Well, we should compare that to a barefoot scenario. So we would have no insulation, no insulator, and that is our control. So we always want to mark our control. Um, and it's okay if you don't always fill every bar here, um, every column. You just want to make sure that you have accounted for all your levels of IV. Uh, and our repeat of trials, it says we're going to put hot water bottles inside each sock. Socks usually come in pairs, so we can use each sock. And we can run our control once is fine. We can do it a second time if we want. The more trials we run, the better our data will be, the more reliable it is. Um, but for this experiment, this would be sufficient. And our dependent variable, as we discussed the other day, was the temperature of the water after 20 minutes. So the final temperature of the water. When we are writing a hypothesis, we want to make sure that we are as specific as possible and that we are using our uh, we're using directionality in our hypothesis. And what that means, you can't just say, if I use an insulator, then the temperature will change. That is too generic. We need to focus in and say, if I use a specific material, that will insulate better. And what will that translate to? So for example, if wool is the best insulator, then it's gonna keep that water bottle warmer so that the final temperature will be higher. Then the final temperature will be higher. And now we have again directionality. We're saying that wool is the best and that will lead to the warmest final temperature. Um, and that's a little more direct. And now our constants, so remember a constant is all the things that we keep the same. So we had some that were set up for us. We're gonna use the same water bottle type. We're gonna use the same starting amount of water, the same starting temperature of the water, the same amount of time sitting, in the cold weather. And some other constants, we'd wanna have the same environmental conditions. 
we wouldn't want to put some of the bottles in the sun and some of the bottles in the shade. We wouldn't necessarily want to do one experiment at 8 in the morning and the other one at 3 o'clock in the afternoon um, because those t outside temperatures might be different. So same environmental conditions um, and all those other pieces. And our materials needed, we know we're going to need the socks, wool, cotton, nylon. We know we're going to need the bottles, we're going to need water, and we need hot water specifically. So how am I going to get that hot water? I will need a heating element. Um, I want to let the bottle sit for 20 minutes. How do I know 20 minutes has passed? I will need a timer. And then I want to record the temperature, so I will need a thermometer. Um, and so these pieces here, these are really the extension of what you will need to be thinking about that as we go through an experimental design diagram, how are you going to measure your results and are those things accounted for? Um, so those are some big things I'd be looking for. I might need a... Uh, graduated cylinder, how am I going to measure that it's the same amount of water? Um, and so all those pieces come into play there for our materials. Um, be as comprehensive and exhaustive as possible, but the main things I'm looking for when I'm assessing you is would I be able to collect the data that I needed based on what you have given? And then the final piece um, in order to set up an experiment correctly, we want to make sure that we have a good data table that we can write down our data. So I can insert a table, and we can always modify if it's too short or too long. And I want to put my IV in front, so I have my material or my insulator, wool, cotton, nylon, and no insulator. And I know that I want to do two trials, so trial one and trial two. And maybe I want to do something like an average. And what am I recording? Well, I'm going to record my dependent variable. Remember, that's the data that I collect. So trial one, final temp. And Celsius, we're always going to want to use Celsius. Just copy paste, so final temperature. Um, and now I have a neat data table. I know everything I need for my experiment. I know what I'm going to be testing, and I am ready to go. So that's just a little bit more on an experimental design diagram and how we can use them in the biology classroom.